I'm Steve Beal, and this is Ignite TV, and I'm so glad you're tuning in this week. Praise the Lord. Man, we have a great song we're going to sing. It's a very popular song on the radio. It's called Good, Good Father, and we're going to get to that in just a minute. If you're new to the show, then you'll see there's a t uh, telephone number at the bottom of the screen. It's an 844 number. It is toll-free. Our partners are paying for that number for you to call us for free, and we will pray for you. We have an intercessory prayer team by the phone right now waiting to take your call. We want to pray for your needs, for healing, and if you want to come back to the Lord, whatever's going on in your life, you can give us a call. We're not a counseling service. We're just going to pray for you. But I know that prayer changes things, and God hears our prayers. Hallelujah. He's so good. Now, you're going to also see a second phone number on the screen. It starts with 267, and that is for text messaging. Get your cell phone out and text me your prayer request right now, and we'll be praying for you. We write them all down. I have a bunch of them here from this week, and we're going to be praying for some of these at the end of the service and for you at home. But we just love you. We want God to touch you. Man, I want to see the Holy Spirit move in your life in mighty ways. And that's why we're on TV, because we want to touch your life and ignite your life for Jesus Christ. Now, we have this great song, Good, Good Father. Later on in the program, we're going to be in Matthew 26, talking about God the power. It's an awesome sermon. You're going to love it, and you want to stick around for that. But let's get to this song, Good, Good Father. May the anointing of the Holy Spirit bless you right now. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night, and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know that we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good As you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love Who I am. 
Hey, I hope you enjoyed that song, Good, Good Father. Man, it's one of my favorites. Now listen, before we get to our sermon on God the Power, I want to speak to you who've been watching on WBPH. This is a Christian channel, Eastern PA. We've been on it for a couple years now and been very blessed to, to make friends and to preach the gospel and see some of you healed and you call in and uh, have praise reports and good things happening. We have a lot of prayer requests here just from the last week or so. But listen, I want to talk to you. You've been watching. You've been with me. We have an open door to go on secular networks. We have a great open door. Our, our quality of our video is good enough. And ABC in Myrtle Beach, we have an open door to go on there right now and preach the gospel to one million people a week. We're going to take the same show we're airing on our Christian channel right here, and we're going to change just the ending. It will be the same song and the same sermon, but at the end we are going to go for souls and really ask God to give us souls on the secular networks. We need just 16 more partners. The reason we're not on there right now is because of money. And we need 16 50-50 partners. And we've made the 50-50 partnership $20 a month. And so if 16 of you would partner with Ignite Ministry at $20 a month, we can preach the gospel to 1 million people. It's an amazing opportunity. And that's not many partners left. We're almost to our goal. It's just a Starbucks coffee a week. If you could send that to us, $5 a week, $20 a month, we would be able to preach the gospel, 16 of you, 1 million people. Now listen, if you become a partner, you get a newsletter, you get the DVD of the month automatically, and I have a series I'm preaching right now, Life Beyond Measure. It's going to be eight DVDs, I believe, and uh, it's going to be a wonderful package. It's an $80 value. We're going to send that to all our partners for free. We just want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, and we want to do it on secular channels without asking for money or anything like that. But on this Christian channel with our Christian brothers and sisters, we really need your help. So if you would pray about it, ask God. There's no pressure. Praise the Lord. We're going to be on this channel. We have enough partners to stay here. Don't worry about that. But if you would help us and partner, we just need 16 more. There's other networks that are opening as well. I'll let you know about them in the future. But if we could just get to this goal right now, we can start the new year preaching the gospel on ABC in Myrtle Beach to 1 million people. Hey, pray about it. Give us a call. You can call right now, and we'll uh, take your information. Go online is the easiest way, or you can mail it in the mail and let me know. But let me know. Please pray about it. I know God is touching your heart. $20 a month, we can touch 1 million people. Thank you for considering that. And listen, let's get to the Word of God, God the power. In Matthew 26, Jesus called God the power. You're going to see a sermon from a revival I preached uh, this summer in Cumberland, Maryland. I want to show you this footage. You've I aired it one other time, but it's awesome. Be blessed as you watch it. We'll pray at the end. In Matthew 26, verse 63, Jesus is arrested and standing trial. And it says, but Jesus kept silent and the high priest answered and said to him, I put you under oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the son of God. Jesus said to him, it is as you said, nevertheless, I say to you, Hereafter, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Listen to me, friends. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I'm going to show you some stuff that maybe you've seen I had never seen for 46 years. But, man, it's awesome. Jesus, when he calls something something, that's what it is. In fact, I believe if Jesus called your hair green, it would turn green. He speaks and he creates. Amen? Amen. Didn't he speak and create? In the beginning, he said, let there be light. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Jesus is God. Jesus was there at creation. Jesus spoke. And in, when, so when Jesus calls someone something, that's what they are. And in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus calls God. He didn't say, I'm going to sit at the right hand of God. He didn't say, I'm going to sit beside the Father. He said, I'm going to sit there beside the power. Do you see that? Does your Bible say power? It's dunamis in the Greek. It's power. That's all it is. Isn't that awesome? You're going to change the way you pray tonight, man. We are going to pray to the power. Now listen to me, friends. When Jesus calls someone something, that's what they are. And Jesus called God the Father the power. Now, I'm going to make a controversial statement, and then I'm going to fix it. Here's the controversial statement. God does not have any power. 
How do you like that? But I'm going to fix it. See, God does not have power. You do not measure God in power like you do your fuel tank. God is the power. For thine is the power and the glory. God is the power. Jesus didn't say God who has power. He didn't even say God. He didn't say Father. He said dunamis. He said the power. It's another name for God. We have a lot of names for him, Jehovah, and we have a lot of names like Jehovah Jireh. We all know that one, my provider, and there's a bunch of those, Hebrew names. You can call God tonight the power. Now you say, what's the big deal? You know, I've never seen it. I don't know if you ever saw that in there. We read the Bible how many times through in a year we read it through, and, we, and sometimes we miss stuff. But friends, Jesus called God the power, and it's significant because he is the power. Now listen to me, friends. Do you know what that means? For anything in all of creation to have any power, it has to be given to it by the power. You get me? You have no power, right? Doesn't James? Every breath is a gift from God, amen? You have no power unless the power gives you the power. So all the power you have even if you went to the gym, you know, you know, God gave you the strength. God gave you everything you have. People work hard all their lives. They edge their lawn, and I'm, all, I'm okay with edged lawns. I like your lawn edge. It's nice. I'm glad you did your hair tonight. I'm glad we made ourselves look presentable. But you know what? All the power, you work overtime, you want an extra thing, you want your boat or whatever. Listen, all the glory goes to God. He is the power. All power that you have came from your Father in heaven. Anything you do, you give him the glory. Praise the Lord. You know, I can't play piano. I don't take lessons. I sat back in that Kimball, that same Kimball still back in that room, that old Kimball Grand. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That used to be the youth room right behind this stage actually underneath it, kind of, and Mike now, and I sat there and couldn't play piano, and he'd play the strings on his guitar, and I'd find the, the note that matched and go, bing. And then we'd do the next one, and we did that till we learned a song. It's the power. And I sat on that piano, and the Lord said, I'm going to give you this, but you don't ever take the glory. Someone says you can play that piano, you say, praise the name of Jesus. To God be the glory, because he can take it away, folks. It's all for him. And I don't play for anybody but him. Hallelujah. And I play for my wife every now and then. Hallelujah. Anyway, God gives us the power, because he doesn't have power. He is the power. When you're praying for healing, you can easily, in good doctrine, good theology, say, the power. Help me. Take my headache away. Doesn't it kind of change your focus? I mean, you can be praying God, but when you say the power, now you have just recognized he's got the goods to get you through. Amen? He'll heal your marriage. He'll pay your, he'll get you through that mortgage or he'll get you out of that house, okay? Moves aren't bad sometimes, huh? You'll get a new job. You lose your job. You go on your knees and you say, the power. You gave me that job. It's gone. You'll help me. I know you will. Go to him in faith. Doesn't the Bible say he answers your prayers before you even ask him? And this is my, just my introduction too. Hallelujah. Because I want to show you something about the power that's going to blow your socks off. You better tie your socks onto your ankles. Praise the Lord. You see, my friends, it's not an if. God is the power. So every created being, everything in creation receives its power from God. Amen? Do you agree? Amen? This is a Wednesday night crowd. Come on. Woo! Now listen. And we're south of the Mason-Dixon line. Come on. How many of you like NASCAR? I love NASCAR. Anybody? Okay, a few. Wow. I was preaching in Bethlehem two Sundays ago. How many of you like NASCAR? One guy raised his hand. Another guy went, mm. I said, one and a half. That's what I expected. <laughs> Up in Pennsylvania, you know. It's not as popular, but I like NASCAR. 
The power gives everything power. So guess what? The devil got his power from who? From God. Isn't that right? Does the devil have his own power? He seized his own power. He tried to be God, didn't he? Wasn't that dumb? What did God do? Kicked him out of heaven. I don't want, do you want to be God? I think it'd be boring to be God. Don't you think it'd be boring to be God? Can you imagine, you're going to, imagine if you're God and they're throwing you a surprise birthday party. And you walk in and go, I knew you were going to be here. You have 55,000 hair on your head. You got about 20,000. 10, 15, dude. Sorry, we'll make it up in heaven, all right? We'll make it up. He's a good sport, hallelujah. Right, who wants to be God? You never get a surprise party. I love, I love surprising my family with gifts, you know, and I hide it. Can you imagine if they were God? They'd do, oh, I know where you hid it. I know what's in there. I don't want to be God. The devil wanted to be God. What's wrong with him? Is he crazy? He was an angel. He's one angel. What, is he some special angel? I know there's theology on all about him. I'm not an expert on the devil. I'm an expert on the victory Jesus gave me. Listen, I'm here to tell you tonight, and I drove four hours to tell you, you have victory in Jesus. I'm tired of preachers telling you we're going to have the victory when Jesus comes back. We got the victory at the cross, folks. We got the victory at the empty tomb. We got the victory at the ascension. And on the day of Pentecost, we got the victory right here. Because my body's the temple of the Holy Spirit. This place ain't the temple, folks. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, you are full of the Holy Ghost. Woo! He's in you. Hallelujah. I'm not going to do the alien thing, Joe, okay? I did that one time on the sermon. I put my hand inside my shirt and went like this, you know? Some people really appreciated it, you know? God is in you. Did you know God is in you? Do you know 1 Corinthians 6, 6 says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, that you are joined one in spirit with God? Do you know 1 John 3, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of God? What did it say on our buses years ago? King's kids. Right on the front. Anybody remember that? But we hear it so much, we're all God's children. And even the world, you know, the world's wrong when it says we're all, we're not all God's children. First John says there's children of God and there's children of the devil. We're not all God's children. Unless you're born again, you're not his child. Salvation is so much more than a ticket to heaven. It is a transformation. The victory was won at your birth, your second birth. You have everything. The answer to every need in your life lives inside of you. The Holy Spirit. This isn't the temple. Well, we all know that already, don't we? Then what's the problem? We need a revelation from Jesus Christ of the power. Not the power he has, he is the power. What did he say to Moses? What's your name? I am. There you go. That's it. He's all of it. He's everything. He's the all. He's the power. <clears throat> so many people come up to me and they say, man, the devil has just been messing my life up. The devil got in that church and split it. I hate to tell you, but people split churches, not the devil. We're wicked. We've got flesh. We blame the devil for so much. And I'm here to serve notice. I was scared of the devil. I'm 47 years old. I was scared of the devil for 46 years as a preacher. When my board said we ought to go on TV and we were talking about it, I thought about the prince of the power of the air and we're going on the air. And man, see, but I've met the king of the air. Hallelujah. He's just the prince of the air. I've learned in the last year because of the revival we had at our church and how the Lord showed me I'm his kid. It changed my life. I'm not scared of the devil anymore. He's scared of me. Do you know the devil doesn't want to come near me? He does not want to come near me. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send him to a bunch of pigs. And guess what? You can do it too. Because greater is he that's in you 
than he that's in the world. It's math. You ever see the greater than symbol? It's a little in you, the Holy Spirit. Now I'm going to show you something, John chapter 13, if you turn to John 13, 21. John 13, 21, Jesus is at the Last Supper. When Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Then the disciples looked at one another, perplexed about whom he spoke. Now there was leaning on Jesus' bosom one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him, motioned to him to ask who it was. They're talking about John. John was there. John never says his own name like that. Then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it is he to whom I shall give a piece of bread when I've dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. Now after the piece of bread, now look, this is, this is happened chronologically, okay? Consecutive. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. Okay? This is very important. It's something I've never seen. I couldn't believe it. It blew my mind. Uh, da Vinci painted the Last Supper. Isn't that right? And he got it wrong. He missed a person in attendance. Well, we have the 12 disciples. And we have Jesus. Who was missing? I'll tell you who was missing. Satan. Satan was at the Last Supper. Now listen, folks. A lot of Christians I've come across, they think the devil's omnipresent. They think he can be anywhere at once. I hear Christians attributing the gifts of God, the character of God, to the devil. The devil's a fallen angel. God is the power, amen? Not the devil. The devil got any power from God. That's who the devil got it from. He didn't muster his own power up. He got it from God. Now listen, Jesus dips the bread and gives it to Judas. He says, this is who you're going to go in. This is who's going to betray me. And then the devil, Satan, Lucifer, enters Judas and possesses him. Now, how can the devil possess Judas if he's not there? If he's in Mexico, he can't do it. If he's in Canada, he can't do it. If he's in Russia, he's not here. You know, the devil can't be in Russia, Mexico, Canada, and Cumberland, Maryland at the same time. Did you know that? God can, but not the devil. He doesn't have omnipresence. He's not all-knowing. He's not all-powerful. He's a fallen angel. He's a defeated foe, folks. He has no control of my life anymore. And tonight, you're going to know that you're free too. Praise the name of Jesus, because your father is the power. Not the devil. He has no control of your life. If you lose your job, go to the power and ask him why. What you doing with me? What am I doing? Help me. So the devil could not enter Judas unless he was at the Last Supper. So da Vinci should have painted the Last Supper with the devil there. Now let me, oh man, this is just going to really do it. It's going to mess your hair up. You think the devil wanted to be at the Last Supper? I don't think he did. The devil didn't want Jesus to go to the cross. He didn't want our redemption bought. In fact, King David prophesied the Last Supper, and you quote the scripture at every funeral and sing about it, and he prophesied the Last Supper. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Is that cool? The devil was at the Last Supper. Da Vinci got it wrong. He didn't want to be there. This is Jesus' party. I'm going to save the world. I'm going to save you, 2016. I'm going to save your family. You're going to be free. This town's going to be free of heroin because of Jesus' blood on the cross. I say in the name of Jesus. 
You can win your town back. The devil cannot run you out of town. He can only discourage you and get you to try to leave on your own will. How about that? I'm not saying I never have, have bouts with the devil. I know we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against the devil. I wrestle the devil for souls that he's got. I'm fighting him for lost souls. I'm not fighting him for my health. I'm not fighting him for my well-being. I'm not fighting him so I can get a clear view of heaven. Heaven lives inside of me. Jesus said the kingdom of God is in you. Am I right? Read your Bible. It's there, folks. You're free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Praise the Lord. I have but seconds, but I want you to know Nina in Pennsburg, I'm praying for you. I got your message. And uh, Linda in Allentown, man, we have your message too. Praise the Lord. Some of you are hurting so much. Shirley in Philadelphia, we're praying for you. All these needs and everyone watching at home, your blessing go forth, Holy Spirit, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. What's going to happen then is the wrath of God is going to be poured out on the hard-hearted, stiff-necked people that have rejected His Son, Jesus. There is going to be a distinguishing, and it's already occurring, that those who are truly sons and daughters of the Most High will shine like the morning sun. We need help from our faithful viewers that believe in what we are doing in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. America is in a great time of need. Let's join together to bring the answer to our family, friends, and neighbors. Your partnership of $50 a month is not only going to bless our country with the gospel of Jesus Christ, but you will also be partnering with the blessing God has given to Steve Beal and Ignite TV. To become a 50-50 partner with Steve and Ignite TV, you can contact us by mail, by phone at our toll-free number, 844-447-4700, or go online at www.ignitetv.org and click on the 50-50 partner tab and follow the instructions for a recurring donation. Thank you for your support.